good day learners of SDU1 Pangasinan. Teacher Neil here and join me for another amazing lesson here at Siyansaya TV where learning science is always fun. You've probably heard of Charles Darwin. He is best known for his contribution to the science of evolution. But before we get to him, we need to understand how different people throughout the 17th and 18th centuries tried to answer the same question. What is life? In this lesson, you will learn to enumerate the scientists and cite their respective contributions in the development of evolutionary thought. Describe Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's hypothesis on evolutionary change. Discuss Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And explain the modern synthesis as the unified theory of evolution. In the past, Lots of people were trying to figure out how to classify living things. But thanks to Carolus Linnaeus' binomial system, the struggle is over. Using the Linnaeus system, which biologists still use today, the first name or genus represents a more general category. The second name or species is based on specific characteristics. For example, try to guess what's the name of modern humans using the binomial system. That's right! We are Homo sapiens, which also means intelligent men. Because of Carolus Linnaeus' invention, he is now known as the father of taxonomy. But his classification system did not stop there. In 1735, he published his classification system in a work called Systema Naturae, which means System of Nature. The highest level of classification in Linnaean taxonomy is kingdom, which represents major divisions of organisms like the plant and animal kingdom. Below kingdom is phylum or phyla. Phyla in the animal kingdom include chordates, which are animals with an internal skeleton, and arthropods, which are animals with an external skeleton. Under phyla is class. Examples of classes in the chordate phylum include mammals and birds. Then class is divided into orders. Orders in the mammal class include rodents and primates. Order is then divided into family. Families in the primate order include hominids, which are apes and humans, and hylobatids, which are gibbons. Below family is the genus or genera. Genera in the hominid family include homo or the humans and pan which are chimpanzees. And at the bottom of the Linnaean system is the species. Species in the pan genus include pan troglodytes which are the common chimpanzees and pan paniscus or the pygmy chimpanzees. The reason for the need for classification is because of evolution. The theory of evolution was inspired of the gradualism theory in geology, developed by James Hutton, according to which profound changes to the earth. This theory inspired an evolution theory in paleontology, that is the study of fossils, also called as gradualism, according to which the species appeared by the gradual transformation of ancestral species. According to this theory, the population of a species is transformed slowly and progressively into a new species by the accumulation of microevolutionary changes in the genetic heritage. But the most famous theory of evolution was the natural selection by Charles Darwin. It took Darwin years to form his theory, and his reasoning was developed through the contribution of others. His reasoning went like this. Just like Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, Darwin assumed that species can change over time. And the fossils he found helped convince him of that. And from Charles Lyell, Darwin saw that Earth and its life were very old. Thus, there had been enough time for evolution to produce the great diversity of life Darwin had observed. And from Thomas Malthus, Darwin knew that populations 
could grow faster than their resources. This overproduction of offsprings led to a struggle for existence in Darwin's words. From artificial selection, Darwin knew that some offsprings have variations that occur by chance and that can be inherited. In nature, offsprings with certain variations might be more likely to survive the struggle for existence and reproduce. If so, they would pass their favorable variations to their offsprings. Darwin coined the term fitness to refer to an organism's relative ability to survive and produce fertile offsprings. Nature selects the variations that are most useful. Therefore, he called this type of selection natural selection. Darwin knew artificial selection could change domestic species over time. He inferred that natural selection could also change species over time. In fact, he thought that if a species changed enough, it might evolve into a new species. Let me check if you remember our today's lesson. Again, what is Carolus Linnaeus system that helped us classify living things? Great job! That is the binomial system. Let's try another one. Who developed the theory of evolution by natural selection? Correct! It was Charles Darwin. I hope that learning the development of evolutionary thought will help you understand that change is difficult, but not to change is fatal. Once again, I am Teacher Neil. Next week, new lesson and new teacher.